What's up my know-it-alls? It is time. The Continental is open for the final time and this is an extravaganza. This is nearly a two-hour movie. It's unbelievable. If you have been, if you've missed any of the previous episodes, so help me, you need to go see everything first because I'm going to spoil it. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'm telling you right now, figure out what you can do with yourself because I'm about to spoil everything. Who is it? It's Luke. This is the third and final installment in the Continental mini series on Peacock. This is episode three, part three, if you will, titled The Arena of Pain. Uh, this episode sees the end of three solid nights. It's known as night three, actually. Uh, it's not a part or episode. Uh, each of these has been night one, night two, and night three. And this has been an unbelievable ride. Uh, some things were confirmed, so other things. So um, I'm, let's just, let's dive right into it. The episode starts very clearly with their rehearsing. Winston and the crew are rehearsing and they're trying to get it right and they just don't, their heads aren't right. Out of frustration and whatnot, uh, uh, Winston has a quick couple of words with everybody and he storms out and leaves. We, we follow several of these storylines around and then everything culminates in the back and in the, in the, the latter two thirds of this whole thing. Let's just go through the characters. There's a heart to heart that Lou and her brother have, specific Lou and Miles have, specifically about the nature of what they're doing, what, whether they should be doing or not. She's torn up apart. She's like, you need to start telling me the truth. And she talks to him about Chen and everything else going on and, uh, and the orphan master and whatnot. And, uh, and he's, he literally tells her, he's like, look, uh, everything you think is a lie. I wouldn't, you don't, you don't, and you don't want to know. You don't want to know what you think you want to know. Because she accuses him, uh, Miles, of wanting to be like, they're, uh, of wanting to be different, diametrically different from their father. Continuing on her storyline, because everything does intercut, but we're going to get her storyline finished first. As everybody else is heading out to the, to the, to the mission at the Continental, Orphan Master and his people show up in force. She's already not feeling very much like giving a damn. So he, he hands her a gun and he says, your father, murdered my, the people who lived here and didn't care. And he took up, he took up residence in here and operated out of here with impunity. And that's going to end. She realizes her dad was the bad guy and he has a gun to prove it with her dad's hiro. Okay. And it's like, and that's his, the first part of his first name. And so she's got to reconcile that. And the orphan kid doesn't want to go with him anymore. So he stays with her, the, the little orphan Chinese boy and with the little page boy hat and the whole bit. But while he, when he came in earlier, he grabbed a little remote. And so they're sitting on the, a little bit later, they're sitting on the bench overlooking everything. And he, uh, he, she, 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 he shows her that she's like, you want to see what that looks like? And she blows up the dojo with all of Orphan Master and his people in there. So that is seemingly the end of that storyline. So then we move, she, she rejoins everybody else in a little bit and for the main, for the main plot. Winston, he goes to visit Maisie. You know what? I need to back up actually, forgive me. The whole thing actually starts once again in 1955. Specifically what you see is him and his brother, Frankie and Winston as children. Their mothers tucking them in, in the trunk of the car. She tells them they'll be safe and this and that. Um, both Mrs. know and I believe that that's the last time they probably saw their mother. But then you cut to Winston and he's looking in the back of a car that seemingly is that at the junkyard, at the old junkyard where they were, where they, where all this rigmarole started. He has this look on his face like he's really contemplating what's, what, what, what this has been all about the whole time. And come to find out, Maisie gave him a lot to think about. Oh yeah. So he, he asked later on for her to meet him at an old rundown bank that, that's uh, uh, been condemned. Find, come to find, he tells a story about his mom, we used to work at the business and that, but want to get it. It's sad and he just, you, you come to realize Winston is like those people at the Bowery. He came from that life. And because of it, he wanted to try to conquer things and this and that. He couldn't get out of his head that she didn't want his money. And so he, so he, he tells her his story. And that's what it all boils down to. His story is very much a story of a child on the streets, impoverished, just like Maisie's people. And he came up and then he says, he's like, you know what? This, these banks stand here, even though they're condemned, even though there were nobody's in them anymore, they stand here like monuments, mocking your people, the people on the street, everybody who doesn't have money. 
So then he hands her the deed to the bank and there's suit racks on the side. And he goes, and she's like, I don't really think a suit makes the woman. He goes, no, no, but I think some of your people, I might be able to, if I can put them to work, I can give them some suits. And, uh, and he gives her the bank. All this story coming together and you clearly get the understanding that Maisie's, Maisie's on his side. So then, you, <laughs> Gene, Gene finds the perfect spot to see virtually all the rooms and all the windows and all the halls at the Continental. And it's this nice little sweet lady who's about his age and, uh, and she's gonna be, he, he sends her away on a trip pretending to be the pest control guy, whatever else. And he's in the place. While he's there, she comes home. He's got a gagger, but he's really nice and sweet to her, which is hilarious, that whole scenario. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. But then you have, of course, now we get to the actual thing itself. There are several parts of this that I'm gonna talk about. First, let's talk about the story because I really feel like it's important. Yet we, I really think it's very important. The story itself works really well until it doesn't. And so the, it, from here on, it's action, it's everything else. Oh, what's her face? Uh, KD, uh, KD tracked down Lou's place, then uh, Katie's boss tracked down uh, uh, KD, and it's this whole thing. And finally, he <laughs> there's this unbelievable telephone fight. I say telephone fight, I mean in a phone booth between Lou and uh, and Katie's boss, that one detective guy. And they're just scrap, and she is unbelievable. The choreography in this thing is really, really good. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> So it's, <laughs> this is all the stuff that kind of got her thinking and whatnot and all these things that started getting messing with her head. Uh, started messing with Lou's head. Meanwhile, at the Continental, Cormac has literally lost it. It's the last day, he's cussing everybody out. He asks Sharon about, about where, uh, you know, to, to make the, make his, his little, his, uh, make his special, uh, special gas. He wants a special, the, the laughing gas, the good stuff and what, it's, it's really funny. The fun fumes. I need my medicine. So he's, he's getting ready, man. He's getting ready for it. And so he's got people tracking down, tracking down uh, Winston and they track Winston down to the very, to the hotel he's in. Actually, the person who tracked down first is KD. She goes to track him down a little bit. And so when there's this massive gunfight, the twins and a couple of the guys show up and they take they take Winston and as they're going down as, as Winston's coming downstairs, he runs into KD. There's a shootout in the lobby. KD gets hit. She's not dead though. The two tw twins take uh, Winston and they're gone. What's her? Uh, Lou gets back to the hideout, tells everybody, "Hey, he's this and that." And you're like, and and all I can think is, "Oh my God, the plan's falling apart. It's all coming crashing down." Winston is dragged before Cormac. And he's not gonna, he's not get back and down. He's he's like doubling down hard. He's like, I don't have the thing, I don't care anymore, whatever. That's when Sharon, he tells Sharon, uh, uh, Cormac tells Sharon, open the balcony, because he's gonna obviously he's gonna throw Winston out or something or have someone do it. And when he gets, they open the door, the whole thing, they turn on him. Sharon turns on him. And he's got a shotgun and he could shoot him, and everything's coming to get you. Find out this was the first part of the plan. I was right. Mr. Know-it-all strikes again. I said it had to be he's either in on it and he's that good of an actor, or Winston was depending on what his actions would be. Come to find out he was that good of an actor, it's all part of the plan, and that they're in. So everybody, the, the garbage truck shows up with the one guy, uh, the, the man in the seat, in the chair, so to speak, who's, <laughs> It's 1970s high tech, so you got these big tube TVs on a table inside this trash, converted uh, trash, uh, trash uh, waste management truck. And so everybody's getting in, and finally Cormac manages to uh, to get away because Sharon can't shoot him. All the stuff is real. The story work. The story's really working well, and I'm seeing the parts come together. Yen's getting her revenge. All these things are happening. Finally, everyone descends because Cormac got away. Not got away, but he escaped to a certain part. He manages to make it to the emergency place and he's trying to alert someone and finally the red light comes on. That's it, Winston's ready, everybody's ready, it is on. Luckily you got Gene from far away who's popping fools left and right in the halls. Uh, you got people in suits everywhere. All this stuff's going down. It is one of the best, I would say, not, okay. People like to compare stuff like to the raid or to the hallway scene from Daredevil or whatever else. This is its own thing because it, imagine a massive set piece 
where everything is part of the action. So every moment in the hotel, every floor they go to, every encounter they have is very much a part of the story and propels the narrative forward in a way that I found extraordinarily satisfying. As a former TV writer and someone who's been in the business, I was so ex excited for this. I, 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 I wish some parts of, the, of, of episode one had had this much energy, but at the same time, I get it. The story was amazing. So when you get to this, it is the sad, the third movie is a satisfying third act as far as I'm concerned. It's super satisfying on a lot of levels until it's not. Corbin's clearly, he's, he's lost it. He happens, he, he manages to get himself to the 13th floor. The 13th floor is where they had operations. Operations are hidden between the floors and whatnot. And so he's, there's this, there's this nerdy guy there for 1970s nerdy, whatever. And so, and dude wants to like blow up the, the hotel and he's like, and the guy at the place is like, are you crazy? No, we, this, isn't, this isn't that kind of scenario, whatever. As they're watching on the cameras, little by little, the entire team takes people out, everybody is taking somebody out. Fights are happening all over the place. Yen faces off with the twins, which is an amazing fight. Oh, it's amazing. Culminating in one of the best dual fight scenes I have ever seen. It's Lou Miles versus the male half of the twins. This is, they're both sitting there, dude's covered in dust, and next thing you know, whew, it's old, it becomes an old, full, old school black exploitation kung fu flick, and I am here for it. Especially when homeboy grabs the uh, a pool cue and like and starts he starts fighting him off and beating him down and breaks the pool cue and stabs Miles in his shoulder. Oh, it's awesome! And of course he's and he got he's got uh, he's got Chicky in a chokehold using the the the, uh, the the pool ball yoke and so then she's being choked. She looks up and you see her new as far as I'm concerned her newly adopted kid. He's up in the rafters. He's got her gun and he drops it. She catches her dad's gun, blows dude head away, and she is in. I believe firmly the reason why their dad wanted, uh, Mrs. Noel says she, she believes that their dad wanted, uh, wanted them to learn some other skills other than guns. But I believe while Miles, Miles is not trying not to be like his dad. Miles is trying to be like his dad. And then Mrs. Noel all chimes in and she says, because Lou is like their dad. And I was like, ooh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, man. So Katie gets her hands on Winston at one point and you find out, she he admits full on that he was the guy who uh, burned the place. Come to find out KD, the people that he, the, the business he burned, that they burned when they were children from 1955, that's the connection. KD's family was the people who owned that, that business. That's right. And somehow, and so, so she, She's ready to kill him, and then the sniper, Gene, and dude feels terrible, because he didn't, he's like, dude, I didn't know. We were told there wasn't anybody there. I had no idea. And he, and he literally, he goes, look, um, if you're gonna kill me anyway, let me just tell you, I'm sorry. And she's like, and, and that kind of takes her back. Gene, right then, just on time, because the lady had come home, she fires the gun, she hits her, in the sh uh, hits her, and, and dude, Winston's like, no, stop, 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 stop. He tries to give her their, one, their wunder drug, the one that, that they, the John Wick takes later, the one that lets him like fight still, ignore the pain, but you're you're tearing things up. That's exactly, and she's like, no, whatever. And so he literally very caringly says, look, I will be back, okay? I'm gonna come back for you. And she's all kind of like surprised, like she didn't know what to make of this thing. It's because Winston genuinely is not, he didn't want to do that. And the reason she was after Frankie was because if you remember in 1955, Frankie took the, he took the, the fall. Don't forget, tell them I did it. You didn't do anything, remember? So then later on down downstairs, uh, when, so Winston and them tracked down Cormac to the, the sub-basement area where there's a, there's a train track and he's trying to leave and they have a confrontation and Cormac's about to, to, to go off and she shows up. Cormac just thinks she's just some bounty hunter. He's like, the bounty's off and this and that, blah, blah, blah. She shoots him. She's like, this is my kill. And he thinks she's talking about Winston. She shoots him. And then again in the head, Cormac is dead. And when Cormac, and she, she, uh, she decides to leave. She's like, I'm done. This was, I don't, she like, she wants, I think she was gonna think about whatever, she decides to go. Just then, Cormac's train escape pod shows up. Because if the building's coming down, there's an escape pod. So next thing, as seconds tick away, the, like literally the place is about to go down, Winston runs in and puts his, put, what looks like his hand on the manager thing. He, he cut off Cormac's hand and brought it up there. The next day, the adjudicator shows up and they, they, they pronounce interregnum, shutting, effectively shutting down all of the, all, all of the services and whatnot that happened here uh, and uh, until they can sort things out. And, she, and, and uh, uh, 
what's his face comes out and he's standing on the steps while they talk, Winston. And this is the part where for me things get weird. She says, what, what makes you, it was, why did you think you could come take this whole place or whatever else? And he proceeds to tell her about destiny and this or that. He has, he has the press. He found it in the back of the car when they were kids. And then he put it in the safest place. Where do you put something of value? In a bank. The bank he sold Maisie. The suits were to get everybody else, in the, the, her people in because that's how they help fight in, in, the, in the hotel. Is her homeless guy people, the Bowery people, are dressed in suits. They, they melted down some gold bars and made their own coins to get in and get rooms. So half the people sent to hunt down Winston are the Hermesis people. Oh yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's all, up, it's all super planned out. At the very end, she's like, well, she's like, well, I, if that's what you think it's entitled to, this and that, blah, 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 it's part of a system. The, you're small to them. Like the judicator's really hardcore at trying to make him. So what does he do? She's like, they're not going to talk to you. He steps down off the steps. He's now off of the continental property. He says, they will now. And he shoots her in the head. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all happy day, whatever. He sends the, he sends the guy in the kilt off and, uh, and we fade out, fade to black, whatever. So let's go over some things in this thing now that I, that I thought were up, that were just ridiculous. Just flat out ridiculous. If you're going to make something like this, don't spend all the money before you get to the last episode. So literally, there's this major moment outside of the uh, outside of the armory. To this point, the armory's been the objective. And there's this major moment where they turn the lights out because this is the part where he reveals, where, where Winston reveals that some of the, half the guys in the room are his, are the Maisie's people. And everybody, it's a, it's a Mexican standoff like you read about. And then the lights go off. Here, matter of fact, hang on, I'll show you the scene. Well, I didn't look that impressive, does it? No. That's because I did that. That literally, what you just saw, I created. I created right here, DaVinci Resolve, using B-roll that I downloaded, muzzle flashes. Now, here's the real scene. Okay, are you seeing the problem here? This entire thing, I'm like, dude, we've seen in John Wick these kind of moments. This is the kind of moment where you have everybody running around doing stuff and the muzzle flashes should be the only thing giving us a strobe light into what's happening in the room. Give you that enticement. The same, it's the same effect you get in horror movies where you're like, ooh, 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 and you're looking for stuff. The fact they didn't do that, it was irresponsible and a huge letdown and took me out of the entire thing that fast. Not cool, guys. Come on, all right? How are you gonna spend all the money everywhere else but not on the most important, literally every, this should have been the most important episode. The most important. I also am not a big fan of how, of how it ended. I feel like the ending was a little lackluster. Uh, I would have I felt better if literally, she would have either communicated, so I had told Mrs. Know-it-all, I said, I believe, I believed the adjudicator was gonna contact, at some point was gonna contact dude and say, uh, this is, obviously this isn't working, obviously you're giving him a hard time, here's what we're gonna do. You take him out, the hotel is yours, all we want is the press. Come to find out he's keeping the press hostage in order to, as his claim to the Continental. Oh yeah. And that's, that's how, and the thing, the thing ends with him flexing on the high table like nobody's business. I have, I don't, I'm not okay with that. I would rather him have made a deal with them. Like why did the, the adjudicator suddenly just went like, and then they waste the reveal of her face on her death scene? Like why didn't we get her revealing her face at some point at any other time? It could have been when she approached Winston about taking over the place and because uh, Mel Gibson's character Cormac had been such a dick. But none of that happens. 
And I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed in the way this whole thing turned out, uh, and toward the end. So there you go. Now you know. If knowing's half the battle, you're halfway to being a know-it-all yourself. So what's the know-it-all index for this episode? Uh, for this, it's, a, it's, it's going to be for me. It's a seven and a half. It was an excellent show overall. I like the connection points. The end just got kind of hand wavy, and I believe. I'm sorry, but speaking as a gentleman. We're all better than that. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts on what you think uh, about the three-part series. Uh, also, would you be interested in seeing some more information about the Continental? I know there's some other things coming out. I'd love to kind of share some information and news. Also, I've never really taken a look at the at the actual movies in terms of here on the channel. So I may very well take up some time here and uh, and do some sort of rewind reviews about the uh, the uh, the John Wick series. Let me know one way or another what you'd like to see. I love talking to all this stuff with you guys. You guys have been amazing in the comment section. So all right, guys, we'll keep talking if you keep listening. Here we. We go. Never forget, everyone loves a know-it-all. <laughs>